Welcome back to the Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. And in today's video, it's Christmas in July. And I've never done Christmas in July before, but it looks like fun, so here we go. I'm starting out with this hobnail glass that I picked up at the Goodwill store. And by the way, all of these DIYs today are so stinking easy, but so pretty when they're finished. So you're gonna wanna recreate these. So I'm gonna clean up this glass and we'll move on. My idea is to make this look like milk glass. So I'm gonna paint the inside of the glass with this fusion mineral paint in the color Picket Fence. You could also use chalk paint or even acrylic paint, but I am on board with the fusion mineral paint. So that's what I'm using in this project. Um, I have links in my description box below if you would like to try fusion mineral paint, but it's been my favorite craft paint I've ever used. This is what it looks like after a couple of coats and I prefer painting on the inside so you keep that glossy glass look. Next, you'll need to use a sealant so whatever you put inside of the jar doesn't scratch the paint off. And then I'm going to add one of these little miniature Christmas trees. It's one of the better quality ones that probably came from Hobby Lobby last year. Then I cut off a piece of brown craft paper that you can get at the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to scrunch it around the base of the tree, kind of like um, flowers you would buy in the store, how they have that brown paper around them. I thought that would go really cute with our faux milk glass. And I'm using one of the chalkboard tags from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to write jingle bells on it and put some little snowflake dots and just dress it up a little more. And the white marker that I'm using also came from Dollar Tree and it has been a good one. I've had it at least three years since the beginning when I started making YouTube videos. And I used jute string to tie the tag to the top of the jar. And that was a really easy DIY and the beginning of when I found out that I think I do like Christmas in July after all. Well, at least the crafting part of it. The next DIY is just a painting project. When I saw this bell that was at the Dollar Tree in their shore living summer line, I knew exactly what it would be perfect for. One of those golden brassy harmony bells that's been so popular lately around Christmas time. So I'm going to cut off its tags and begin painting. Now the way to get an aged look on anything is to concentrate on layers. You need lots of multiple layers and you really just get to play around with the paint until it looks how you want it to look. So basically I'm starting out with this white, not white, black chalk paint. I'm just so used to using white paint. <laughs> it's just what comes out of my mouth. But no, I'm going to do a black chalk paint to start off with. Once that's all dry, my next layer is going to be some gold paint and I am using the little pot of fusion paint. I decided to use a stencil brush and only use the paint that was in the lid so that I can get a stipply kind of textured effect. And that is another tip for aging something is to make it textured. So I covered the whole outside with the fusion gold paint continuing just to stipple it on just like this. My third layer is another gold paint, but it's in a different tone. This is called Glam Gold, and you can see it's got a little more brown to it. So watch what happens when I start stippling this second gold color on top. It starts giving more character to the piece and starts making it look older. So you've got the black peeking through and you've got two shades of gold so far and here's how it's coming along i had a bristle from my brush stuck in the paint i had to get that taken away 
but we're getting there. The next thing is something I've been wanting to try and that is folding a paper towel and putting it in a clothes pin and you use that kind of like a dabber when you're painting stuff. You could also use a cotton ball, but I was afraid that the cotton might get stuck in the paint. So anyway, I'm using this paper towel method and now I'm going to use more of that black paint and this is what's really gonna age this bell. Now don't let the black paint scare you. I know that it looks really dark and stark on this brassy looking bell, but there's gonna be yet another layer after this. So if you feel like you've gotten too much black, then it's really easy to fix. And finally, the last layer, and this layer is another layer of the Glam Gold so the more brown color gold and i did not wait for the black paint to completely dry this time because i wanted the black paint to mix with the glam gold to make kind of a custom color and that makes this bell complete well almost i forgot i had to remove the little dinger from the inside and paint the inside of the bell in the little dinger so I'll do a little comparison here. Here's how the Dollar Tree bell turned out. And here are the set of bells from Kirkland's that are like $55. You know I have a subscription to Creative Fabrica and they are having a Christmas in July promotion where you can get access to all their fonts and designs for only $4.99 a month. They're having craft challenges and free gifts and the free gift today is this Christmas craft bundle with over 1300 graphics fonts and designs. I use Creative Fabrica year round all the time because they just have so many cute graphics and fonts for all your crafting and side hustle businesses. So there's a link in my description box so that you can go and check out Creative Fabrica and see what you can get for free and what amazing deals you can get. And I know that you're going to love your subscription because I sure love mine. The next Christmas DIY, I'll be using this set of cookie cutters that I got at the Goodwill store for less than $5 for all these cookie cutters. This is a lot of cookie cutters. And my first thought was, I thought I was gonna paint them all white and distress them up and string them up and they could go on a kitchen Christmas tree. But this is only Christmas in July and I'm not gonna get out all my Christmas trees and all my Christmas decorations. I'm really just trying to make this stuff out of stuff that I already had in the house. So instead of stringing them up and putting them on a Christmas tree, I'm gonna use them another way. I cut out a big piece of brown craft paper, and at this point, I thought I would use one of the cookie cutters and I would dip it in some white paint and use it kind of like a stamp. And I'll stamp all over this brown paper and it could be like DIY wrapping paper. This could be a fun one for you to get your kids involved and your grandkids and just set them out a big old table full of brown craft paper and let them go to town stamping all the little designs that they want to on this DIY wrapping paper. And this is what was happening off to the side while I was stamping my snowflakes on the brown paper. After the paper was dry, I decided to go another route with mine. Instead of wrapping a present with it, I'm going to wrap a book. So I'm going to make a book cover. The first thing you need to do is fold up the top and the bottom parts of the paper and make an indentation because that's where you're going to need to fold the paper so that it's the correct height for the book. 
Then lay the book in the center and fold the paper around the front cover and the back cover. And because I love paper craft so much, I decided to get out this booklet of scrapbook paper that I have. And it's not even a Christmas booklet, but I found that it had a really pretty color green paper and it had some things that look like Christmas trees. I don't think they're really supposed to be Christmas trees, but I'm going with it. I thought it matched the brown paper really cute. So depending on the size of your book, these measurements will vary, but I cut a piece of my scrapbook paper to be four inches by six inches. And so it's going to go on the front cover of my book. And also with that paper, I'll be using the white side. I'll cut an even smaller rectangle to go on top of the green paper. And on this white piece, I'll put a stamp of a saying. These click together letter stamps come in fantastic handy. They came from Michael's. You can get the lowercase or the uppercase letters. And so I'm going to stamp onto this white piece of paper, Christmas carols. And when I'm doing paper crafting, a lot of times I like to use double-sided tape instead of glue because glue tends to make your paper curl up sometimes. So I'm just using double-sided tape to stick all of my pieces of paper onto my book cover. And for some more embellishment, I used some jute string. I tied it about three times around the book. And then I tied a sprig of pine with a little pine cone on it to the front but I really felt like something was missing. It was that space on the white card above where I stamped Christmas carols. If I would have had a stamp of some mistletoe or something, that would have been perfect, but I didn't, I don't really have any Christmas stamps, I don't think. So I just pulled out an embellishment stamp that I had and I added that to the white card and then I was really liking it. This is a Christmas decoration I found at Goodwill. You're supposed to put some votive candles behind here and light it up. And I really liked it, it was really cute, but I think that it didn't live up to all its potential with its gold color. I thought it would do a lot, lot better painted black. So before I could begin painting though, it had this glittery stuff on it. <laughs> And it was kind of embedded into the gold paint, so it didn't all come off, but I did my best to sand off and make the surface as smooth as I could before I painted. And while I was sanding, I saw the sticker on the bottom that said this is a party light piece. And so in its day, this thing was probably quite expensive. Painting this was so satisfying and look, how the details in the reindeer come out so good with this black paint. I was just loving this and so happy that I found it at my Goodwill store. It only took one coat of my folk art black chalk paint to cover this and what a difference. I am so happy with this. I didn't have any votive candles so I lit mine up with some rice lights from the Dollar Tree. And the last Christmas DIY is using this woven basket from the Dollar Tree. I've had this in my stash for a little while and this is the first time I've thought of something to do with it. It's going to be a kind of like a Christmas tree skirt, but instead of using a Christmas tree, I'm just using some branches that I have. And so what you do is poke a hole in the center of the basket and I just used my scissors. It was really easy to poke a hole. Just be careful that you don't make your hole too big because you want your branches or your tree trunk to fit snug. 
Once you have your greenery just how you want it, flip it upside down and put a whole heap and gob of hot glue around the branches onto the basket so that it all stays in place. You could decorate your tree or frost your tree, but I felt like I wanted to leave mine plain and simple. Now let's take a look back at all our Christmas in July DIYs. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and I think I do like Christmas in July. If you want to see more Christmas crafts, click the link that I provided for you right here. It takes you to my Christmas playlist and I will see you next time. Bye!